Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology again and today we shall continue with our series of Ascendance. I have been getting many requests to continue the series. So there you go, we have already discussed on Aries Ascendance and Planets for Aries Ascendance. All right. So it is there in this playlist, if you want to see then just go and type A R I E S in my channel. All right. So if you type Aries or if you type Ascendance, you will find the video on Aries Ascendance. And yes, whatever I say in this video will not hold true for all the Taurus Ascendance because we are not going to discuss here about planets or where the Lord of the Ascendant which is Venus which where, where it is placed how it will behave all right so there are millions and thousands and hundreds and lakhs of people and maybe billions <laughs> who are Taurus Ascendants but everybody has their own horoscope they have their Panchang and everything is dependent on the entire factors okay everything is dependent on the whole chart wherever the whole chart is flowing it will flow in that direction so it can happen that as you are seeing this video and you are a Taurus ascendant but you feel that whatever I am speaking is alien to you you are you are not even one percent of that okay so it can happen but because Lagna shows the intelligence the inherent disposition of a person because the word he is used in the scriptures to describe the Lagna he is intelligence Jupiter so it plays a very important role in our life all right so that trait these traits of uh, taurus will manifest for taurus ascendance to a very large extent and depending on where the lord of the sign venus is placed and where your sun is where your moon is and where all the other planets are remember there are nine planets okay so there are not just only one planet venus or sun moon there are nine planets and where the flow of the chart is going which means where the majority planets are placed or where they are impacting and which sign they are those traits will be very prominent in the person all right so today we will shortly discuss on how taurus ascendants are and the lordships of the planets and later on in the next video we will discuss for each and every planet okay how each and every planet behaves and which houses the planets are ruling all right so today we will discuss in brief about the ascendant itself so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope your love romance your affair or your career or your health or anything else then you can please go to my website to book a reading you will also find the link to my website down in the description section of my videos okay so there you go and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now what is taurus any planet which is situated in the sign of taurus shows that there are blessings of lord shiva in that because of our worship to lord shiva in our past lives those planets are sitting in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is the sign where the planet moon gets exalted. Yes, we all know that. So therefore, Taurus is the sign which deals with family, it deals with women, it deals with creativity, it deals with all the things related to beauty. It is the own sign of the planet Venus. So I also have a video on Taurus, the zodiac sign itself. So that also you can watch uh, before watching this, you will get more idea on what Taurus is exactly. But to give, give a brief idea, this is what Taurus is. So firstly, when we see somebody is a Taurus ascendant, so we will always see that in their first house, number two is written. Okay. So that means that now their intelligence is governed by the traits of Taurus, which means their inherent disposition by default because the lagna is the head what is always on your head how does your head function so the second house originally is the house of taurus in the kalpurush kundli so the taurus ascendants again i repeat depending on the other combinations and placements okay so you might write in the comments oh what you are saying is not true i am not like this i am not like that again you have to see the whole chart 
but if you only talk about the ascendant in isolation they are always wanting to stay in a family because the second house is like sitting above their head <laughs> so they always want to stay in a family now if there are malefics placed there that may not be the case they may want to stay away from a family okay in the ascendant for taurus but generally i have seen in my experience that they always want to stay with a family now it may not be necessarily the family which they were born all right it it is in most of the cases because that is the family with whom we identify the most but suppose they have had some traumatic experiences with their parents in their childhood so then in that case they would prefer staying with uh, somebody else but they always want this family culture they want this sense of togetherness they want this sense of belonging they because the second house is the house of belongings it's the house of savings it's the house of self worth it's the house of value so these people rather they prefer or rather they should prefer i would say i dare also say that they should stay in a place place doesn't mean physically in a home but in any case they should only stay with those people in their life who help them rise their uh, self esteem because if they are situated with somebody who is always criticizing them or who is always denigrating them that oh you are not good for this you are not good for that then it can happen that it affects their self esteem very much now of course you may say that that will happen with everybody but especially with taurus because if they do not get a sense of belonging if they do not feel wanted if they do not feel loved in the place where they are staying then that can uh, make them a victim of inferiority complex or self doubt because what they inherently want they are not getting it so for these people it is highly recommended that if you are not wanted somewhere please do not go there which means you should only stay with people who like to be around with you now it is good if you also like to be around them so suppose you have an option to stay with people who you like but who don't like you and there's another option that you uh, you want to stay with somebody but uh, that person is like <sighs> so in uh, in the, such a case what you should do is suppose there's a person who says i like to stay with you so then you should prefer staying with that person and suppose you are like oh i'm okay with that person but it's not very great but it's still better that you stay with that person because then your self esteem will be restored or other than saying restored i would say it will be protected you will get the sense of belonging so then the other thing we see with the this ascend group of ascendants is that they are always wanting to socialize because second house is the also the house of socializing in a way it represents the people who you meet so these these people love to meet other people they always love to be around people that is very true then the other thing you will see is that these people are always wanting to dress themselves my god this is big if there is one ascendant which always likes to dress themselves up whoever they are man or woman or whoever irrespective of their age then this is taurus they always want to look good you tell them anything about their appearance anything bad that's it it's over <laughs> you compare them with somebody else that oh you know that person you are looking good but that person is also looking good <laughs> anything of this sort you say that's it. especially if you say this to a lady that's it you are out you are out of their list <laughs> what to speak of ladies i have seen even men if you tell them uh, anything that oh you know your dress is good but it could have been better never say that to them never 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 ever suppose uh, a man is a taurus ascendant and you tell him oh you take too much time to dress you know you take more time to dress than ladies oh my god you have had it they will throw you out of their lives <laughs> or if you comment anything on their clothes like oh you are the perfume is not good 
or maybe you would have uh, cho chosen blue for your <laughs> for your shirt not red or not black or not pink or not white anything like that you say that's it they are like no you are not allowed to speak that <laughs> they always think of luxuries they are very 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 prone to luxuries yes because venus is the karaka for the fourth house and venus is the lord of taurus and therefore these people love to relax at times these people are very lazy because it is also earth sign and it is a fixed sign so these people are extremely lazy at times they they don't like to move out of their comfort zone at times so this is one of the challenges which taurus people can face sometimes that they are so much indulgent in their own uh, circle that they are like oh it's so nice here why should i go out <laughs> these people love to sleep if they get a chance what to, of what to do in, what to do in life they are like no nothing doing i'll just go and sleep so these people love to relax basically relaxation is the term which i would use for this group and these people you will always see that their mind is always gravitated towards how can i dress myself up how can i look good how can i feel and yeah these people when they uh, dress well they feel very good and they are very conscious about their appearance they are very conscious about their face especially they may not be too much obsessed with maintaining their body physique or something like that that can also be there but they are very 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 conscious about uh, looking good uh, in their face they will use lot of creams and lot of decorative items all those things they will use and if uh, i have seen many of my friends who are taurus lagna so they sometimes if you stay near them you will feel as if uh they are very feminine which means that they are like oh you know i need to dress like this i need to dress like that they they sometimes uh do those things which uh, ladies do okay they they are like too much uh, obsessed with their makeup and beauty and all this so suppose we need 10 minutes to dress then they will they will definitely need around 20 to 30 minutes and they will be checking the mirror 10 times am i looking good or not <laughs> okay so that 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 is always there with this with these people and then the next thing is that you will see because taurus is the second house of food so they are always dreaming of food food is always in their minds now if there is a if there is a malefic it can happen that they are too much picky about foods which means that if suppose saturn or some planet like ketu is sitting there i have seen generally that they are too picky about foods and they are like oh i will not eat this i will not eat that so they can be too much picky sometimes or if they go out somewhere they might feel that oh i need to have the best food in the town best food in the city have you seen those people who ask that oh you know this food is like good but i think that was better so it's very highly likely that they may be taurus ascendants because they always want the best because venus is the brightest planet in the sky it shows everything that shines so they are like they are running after shine so if they see that a dish is uh, good but it is not well presented like restaurants yes we we see in the restaurants they will add all these things like if you go to an indian restaurant they will add kesar they will add dhania they will add methi so many things to decorate the dishes so if they see <coughs> that the dish is good but it is not presented well because venus deals with look and feel so the dish should look good for them it should feel good it should taste good that should happen with them otherwise they feel there's some problem with the dish okay and also these people are very much interested in liquids can get into addiction sometimes because venus represents liquids and they want the best drink in the town and this can sometimes uh, make them obsessed about taking to tea and coffee tea or coffee too much at times and if there are severe afflictions to the moon or to venus or anything like that then uh, these people can at times feel that we are eating too much but they they may not be able to control it sometimes all right and these people have a tendency to overeat not overeat uh, like in some special occasions but 
their definition of who they themselves are which is the first house it comes from food at times so these people can uh, resort back to food all the time so these people can be uh, behaving in a way that oh what's going on you know life is boring so let's go and order some food that can happen at times and these people they you will see that they uh, they love to watch tv because venus is the uh, ruler now the difference between taurus and libra is that taurus is the own sign and venus uh, libra is the mool trikon sign of venus so for libra people they always like to do things together with somebody else they like to share because libra is the sign of sharing but taurus people at times they may not like that much to share things they may want to be with somebody it's like they hate sharing food always they hate this totally so they may say that okay i am sitting here you are sitting there you have your own food i have my own food but we will eat together you know maybe sometimes i can take from you you can take from me but you must have your own food <laughs> but uh, libra ascendants may not be like that they may be like okay what you are eating let me see okay you can have mine also but taurus people know you you put an eye on their food and that's it you you will be ripped apart in no time so please never eye at their food okay let them eat whatever they are eating and because the connection to lord shiva is there these people also like like to eat uh, drink a lot of milk i have seen at times and because venus is there so they like to eat a lot of sweets deserts they are obsessed about deserts and uh, if there are planets like moon which is sitting then uh these people can uh, also like uh, milk products like rabri paneer cream curd and all these things very much all right and uh, because of their eating habits they can put on too much weight sometimes and because it is a sthira lagna so once they put on weight it it becomes very difficult for them to uh, reduce weight and at times you will see they are uh, the, the the their height is also not very much they are kind of timid sometimes of course that will depend on so many other factors but in general you will see that they are not very tall they are medium size that can be seen and if uh, venus is afflicted then that can be more prominent all right and now because the second house has the sign gemini then it shows that whenever it comes to food and second house they they like to eat too many different varieties of things they are always in a dilemma should i eat this should i eat that and because second house is the house of communication also family so for them communication is very important very 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 important if they are not able to talk properly with whomever they are sitting second house can show those people who you are who are sitting next to you all right that can be seen from the second house acquaintances also at times but if you take second house as a family then it can happen so these people for them communication is very important so any time you see that somebody is a taurus lagna and they tell you that they are having some relationship problem with somebody irrespective of whichever house it is fifth house with children seventh house with their spouse eleventh house with their friends always tell them that you need to maintain proper communication that is why you are facing problems in relationships okay and because the second house is ruled by gemini so at times these people can talk too much too much means too much sometimes <laughs> and these people love to talk on different topics because gemini represents those superficial things which people do sometimes so they may love to talk on politics they may love to talk on sports on this on that my god and because of this they might gossip too much sometimes they can end up talking about things which will actually not be very good for them at times because gemini is the <coughs> sign where the planet rahu gets exalted which means rahu can fulfill all of his traits and duties and his desires in the most wild way in the sign of gemini so <coughs> it can happen that they discuss too much about worldly topics sometimes all right and they may not be too much interested towards spiritual topics to discuss spiritual topics in general or their circle may be surrounded <coughs> by people who are more 
materialistic and at the same time the sign gemini is ruled by mercury so whenever they are thinking of finances which is second house they are very calculative they are like okay if i go here i will get this if i go there then i get this so now the precarious state of these people is that sometimes we know that venus gets debilitated in virgo right <coughs> so whenever venus and mercury are linked so suppose venus is in gemini all right so not venus and mercury i mean whenever venus is linked to mercury then there's one problem which comes so suppose venus is in virgo it's debilitated or it's in gemini suppose so then it can happen that whenever they want to spend something then they are thinking of how much expensive will it be because venus represents pleasure and luxuries and they don't come for free you need to pay for them right so these people because the second house is ruled by a dual sign so whenever they want to spend money they can be like because inherently they are second house yes inherently they are taurus they want luxuries but when it comes to spending for luxuries they can be like okay uh, should i spend here or should i not spend uh, it's a problem you know <laughs> i want this luxury but i want to keep the money also <laughs> because they are very money conscious they are very much conscious about their finances because taurus is the house of finances they always like to hold their assets and they like to hoard assets hold and hoard <laughs> they always want stability in their life they will not prefer to uh, get into relationships or to be with people who do not give them stability all right because taurus represents stability it's the sign of the bull dharma basically and then uh, when you come to the third house you will see that the sign cancer is falling in the third house all right so whenever they are into things like communication see second house is speech but third house is what you do with the speech generally what we do we go into things like youtube we make videos we write books we are expressing our communication like right that's the third house that is why it is the prime house of communication so whenever they are thinking of communication which is the third house it is very important for them that they are able to feel what they are communicating basically so if 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 a taurus ascendant asks you that i want to write a book and suppose the person does not have any planet in cancer provided all right now if there is a planet in the third house that will modify the results but suppose the third house is empty which means we will only have to take moon into consideration because moon is the third lord so in that case what will happen is we will see that we can suggest them that you write something which you feel very much suppose there is something which has happened in your life which you are like oh i can feel this strongly you know very strongly i can feel this then you should write about those things because unless you feel something you will not be able to do proper justice in the third house because moon deals with feelings so suppose you have undergone some terrible experiences in life you can write about that or you got some lesson in life but you but that that made a very strong impact in you internally that you can write okay and the fourth house is ruled by sun surya is the fourth lord because the sign leo falls in the fourth house so these people they have a very 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 strong identification wherever the sign leo is you will have strong identification there <coughs> so these people have a very strong identification towards their luxuries which is the fourth house they have very strong identification with their mother at times they may feel that unless and until my relationship is good with my mother our, our fourth house can also represent uh, your grandmother or your grand your females in the family that can also be seen by the fourth house at times so for them it is a very important it's like a very integral part of their life that a healthy self esteem comes when they are well connected with the home with the family with their mother with their grandmother it can happen at times and that is very essential because otherwise they will feel that they do not have a base in society because sun shows the base where your base is so they may feel that 
I'm baseless sometimes. So for them, it's very important that they maintain good relation with their family members, especially uh, the family after they get married too. It's very important if they are married, and also with uh, the family before their marriage. And that's very important. So these people, they are always <coughs> wanting to stay in a big home because wherever Leo is, he want to do something in a big scale there. So. Fourth house is luxury is also so they are like if they have a chance to go in an economy or in a business class they will be like oh maybe I can go in a business class now everybody might want to go in a business class but these people can be too much obsessed sometimes okay because fourth house is cars vehicles and all these luxury so they may want to take very costly cars posh cars and wherever the sign Leo is you will have a tendency to show off there. <coughs> So they can be too much flashy at times about their gadgets, about their belongings, which is the fourth house. And you might see that whenever they uh, take a new car or anything new, then they are showing it too much because they think that sun is sitting there, which means sun is lauding that. So they feel that I need to show to the entire world because sun is light. Yes, that I have this. <coughs> then it comes to the fifth house what is the fifth house fifth house is the sign virgo virgo falls in the fifth house so whenever it comes to children and anything to do with children they are very much detail oriented they may be anywhere but they're always thinking about their children what the children is doing what they are eating now they may be eating junk food or crap but if their children is eating something bad they're like no you can't <laughs> they're very conscious about their children because wherever Virgo is you will see that lot of your brain is getting sucked there <clears throat> all right and Venus is the planet which gets debilitated in the fifth house <clears throat> for this ascendant because it gets debilitated in Virgo we know that so <clears throat> when Taurus ascendants get too much obsessed with their own uh, what you say their own things then it can happen that because fifth house shows your own belongings what you are inherently as a person okay your creative talent so whenever they get too much obsessed with who they are internally as a person then that can lead them to suffering so now for these people they should be creative there's no doubt about it but whenever they are thinking of creativity which is the fifth house they should understand that there can be limitations and you should not obsess about too much uh, too much about this house otherwise you can feel that i'm be i'm becoming weaker and weaker and weaker which means the lagna lord's power will go down and at times they can throw themselves too much on children and on matters of love romance relationships also so if they indulge in too many relationships then they will have serious trouble in life so for them it's highly essential that they try to look to the 11th house because the 11th house is where the sign of Pisces is so 11th house shows network circles it shows group settings so Taurus ascendants should always have this flexibility that whenever I want to do something I should do it in a way that I can do it in a group setting they should think of the society more because fifth house is sometimes like oh I like this because it's the house of love you know what I love and then fifth house is your children fifth house is like oh this is my children and that's my family but 11th house is like okay this is yours the fifth house but what about the society that's what the society is so Taurus ascendants whenever they are doing something the Lagna Lord gets exalted in the 11th house okay in the sign of Pisces so they should be willing to make sacrifices and um, sacrifices basically for others for the larger cause for the society then they are very happy inside when you do that you will feel that you are very happy inside because then the lagna lord also goes to the 11th house which is the house of gains and fulfillment wishes and desires so taurus ascendants because of the exaltation of venus in 11th house 
they always feel that to some extent they are always short of fulfillment in life because 11th house can sometimes make you feel that you need more and 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 more in life all right 11th house can make you feel like that so when 11th house makes you feel like that because then again if you go to the fifth house which is the house of satisfaction fifth house tells you it's okay man you are happy yourself so that uh, that's the precarious state of this uh, this group of ascendants that they are sometimes not happy and then they are like i want more i want more i want more i want more so there should be a balance also <laughs> okay and uh, the planets which are in the 11th house that can show uh, what kind of desires you have so when the lagna lord is in 11th it shows that you only desire that you become more and more and more successful your desires are fulfilled which is a good placement according to nadi but according to parashara this is like 11th house is a very difficult house so that's the situation that the 11th house which is a difficult house because it fulfills your desire and then you feel that i can get more so then you are not happy basically all right so taurus ascendants should try to get their desires fulfilled but at the same time they should not be too much obsessed they should also try to be happy themselves that should be there that's that's very important for them so these people should more focus on society and doing things for the society for a larger cause then they will be able to be more happy inside all right apart from fulfilling their desires which is the 11th house and then the sign libra falls in their 6th house so these people are very good at negotiating negotiating problems in life so these people they generally tend to negotiate and get their problems finished so suppose there are some challenges in their workplace they will be like okay you know can we do like this <laughs> they, uh, they 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 may feel that it is very important to have a good relationship with your people in the workplace and it is also essential because libra is about dealing with other people so for them it is highly recommended that they maintain good relationships in their workplace all right because venus is also the lord of the lagna apart from the lord of the 6th house and then when it comes to the seventh house the sign of scorpio is there so these people scorpio is the sign of obsession wherever the sign scorpio is you will have obsession there all right so taurus ascendants they are by nature they are very much interested in getting into relationships very much in fact because they think that there's something about the seventh house which they don't know because scorpio shows some things which are secretive so the first relationship which they encounter in their life which is seen from the seventh house can uh, can start in a setting where there is something secret secret going on or they can get attracted to partners who are very secretive in nature which means they are attracted to people who do not reveal themselves completely or who are in kind of a traumatic situation because a uh, scorpio will show traumatic situations so when they see that somebody is having a traumatic situation like a traumatic childhood or they have been abused or anything like that then they may feel that oh i need to take care of this person they they get more attracted to those kind of people because they feel that oh i am stable but this person is not stable so therefore i need to take care of that person so they may fall in love with that person so because of that what will happen is they uh, will always attract partners like that depending on where venus is placed of course and depending on which planets are there in the 7th house and where the 7th lord mars is placed all right and because it is mars and the lagna is venus so they they are very romantic internally yes and externally also <laughs> they li like a lot of <coughs> love and romance and passion and fire in the relationship lot of physical intimacy is required for these people otherwise they are like oh maybe where am i where am i staying <laughs> so for them it's very important to have commitment and surrender and th these kind of traits all right they want they want that their partner surrenders to them then they will also surrender completely so they want full surrender complete surrender they are like no i cannot stay without complete surrender all right 
and then if you go to the eighth house you get the sign of sagittarius so whenever they have a reversal in life or whenever they have a transformation in life they always get a lot of lessons from that they get enlightenment from there because wherever the sign sagittarius is when you activate that house you get enlightenment so for these people you will see that they are getting lots and lots and lots of spiritual uh, enlightenment progress their spiritual progress is happening only via transformation it's like a reversal or oh, they went to do this and then suddenly it backfired and they did something else or they ran into some kind of a scandal eighth house is scandal eighth house is misery eighth house is deaths they saw somebody dying in their family so then they are like oh my god that person died i will also die one day what will happen blah 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 so in that case i need to do spiritual practices all right so then they feel that i need to look to god otherwise they do not look to because jupiter and venus are enemies these people are by default see eighth house is exactly wanting to kill the lagna so jupiter because it's the eighth lord it says oh spirituality is important but when they become spiritual it is through the eighth house which means they have to see some suffering somebody dying only then they become spiritual all right or they have some terrible divorce or breakup or some separation eighth house is the house of tears anything which gives them tears basically that will transform them and by the transform pra transformation they will have spiritual progress otherwise they are like no god is good but i am better here <laughs> okay so now depending on other things uh it will uh, vary on what is going on where and what planets are in the eighth house that will change the dimension all right then we go to the ninth house ninth house has the sign capricorn and shani maharaj rules the ninth house and the tenth house the tenth house is of aquarius and the ninth house is of capricorn both are ruled by the planet of saturn which is showing discipline so taurus ascendants they can feel that their boss which is seen by the ninth house the guide and tenth house the house of your boss so these people they can be too much strict at times all right their father can be very strict or their dealings with their father or with their gurus involves lot of serious practical uh, practical avenues i would say because they, it can happen that they run into gurus depending on where saturn is placed that the guru may say that oh you must uh, do this practice otherwise i will not uh, i will not give you diksha the guru may say that so they need a lot of discipline in spirituality lots and lots and lots of discipline is required in spirituality and it also happens generally because saturn also shows some level of suffering okay just like the eighth house shows so unless there is some suffering the ninth house doesn't open so these people like i said for jupiter sagittarius is ruling the eighth house jupiter i mean so similarly the ninth house is also ruled by saturn which is also a planet of suffering so it can happen that through some terrible suffering in their life they meet a guru it can happen like that or when they are doing some serious work that time serious work means serious 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 work which is capricorn that time they meet their guru or their relationship with their father improves or it can happen that the father is always uh, asking them what are you doing in life how much are you earning what are you doing are you doing this are you doing that the father can at times be uh, that kind of a person who they just want to maintain a official relationship with they may not have very close relationship with their father it can happen at times the, now if there are benefics placed in the ninth house then it may not be the case but if there are malefics apart from saturn then this can happen and they can be like oh once in six months i talk to my father it's like that you know because the frame of capricorn is uh, playing out there and the 10th house is ruled by aquarius which means they always want to do things whenever it comes to 10th house it shows that those things which you want to do at a big scale all right so 
they want to do things related to aquarius on a large scale which means that they are always wanting to change society they are always wanting to do research they are wanting to do things which nobody has ever done in big scale now sixth house is libra job they might be doing anywhere but if you ask them what do you want to do in life if you were the prime minister if you were the president what you would do then they would say you know i would change this i would change that and because saturn also shows the labor class because is the 10th lord also so these people can have compassion for laborers they may say that i want to bring a law which does labor reforms these things can happen and they uh, they would say that i would bring laws which would bring collective changes to the society all right that can happen very much and then they would say we would love to change the society and do things for the betterment of everybody and finally we go to the 11th house which i already spoke of before 11th house is the sign of pisces so for them whenever they meet friends it can happen that they feel oh i know them from many lifetimes even acquaintances sometimes acquaintances can be from the third house but 11th house can show your friends or your close friends so when they meet friends or people in large network circles they can feel that as in hindi they say na hamara janmo janmo ka rishta hai that kind of thing can happen with them so these people they are having the potential to discuss spiritual topics with their friend circles but jupiter also rules the 8th house so there is like this this link between the 8th house and the 11th house okay so and the ascendant lord also gets exalted there venus gets exalted in pisces so whenever they are with friends they are like oh i will give myself fully whatever you want i will do yes they will try to make their friends happy they will try to give basically venus in pisces always wants to give so wherever whenever a taurus ascendant will have uh, the lagna lord in the 11th house they will always want to give themselves to society give themselves to people to friends to others to networks they are always in a mood of giving and they are very happy because it's exalted there and by that their spiritual progress also happens now if there is a transformation then this can be very good because the 8th house is coming into picture so for them the 8th house and 11th house gets active simultaneously because jupiter is the lord okay so the conclusion is for these people that spiritual practices are very important because when you do spiritual practices you get transformed internally because the 8th house gets active and then your 11th house is getting activated which means you are feeling like giving more to others giving more to society and then you are getting exalted there you means the lord of the ascendant which is venus which is you <laughs> so that shows that they should do spiritual practices very much all right because the dispositor of their exaltation sign which is jupiter is also ruling the 8th house so it's very important for them that they have daily regular spiritual practices okay and at the end we see that their 12th house which is the house of sleep and bed and reclining and relaxation that is ruled by the planet mars the sign aries is falling in the 12th house so because of this what can happen is 12th house can also show the subconscious mind at times so if these people uh, get provoked now generally these people would not react very much but they say that when a taurus comes after you he will come very badly he or she <laughs> why do they say that because when they get disturbed actually which is the 12th house because 12th house is the house of loss when you get a loss what happens you get disturbed right it's like the lagna is only losing itself so they are like oh i will come and rip your skull apart so that is why they say that be very careful in dealing with these people because you don't know where you can they they uh, you can uh, predict their nature but once you cross your limits then they'll finish you they will be like oh you have crossed your line that's it i'm going to completely finish you and because aries is a very obsessive energy where the sun gets exalted so these people can have difficulties in sleeping all right their sleep can be disturbed at times because they might feel that 
I don't need to sleep. You know, I'm very energetic because Mars can sometimes dry out that because Mars is fire, you know, and 12th house is moksha. It's jala basically. You need peace of mind to sleep there. And when Mars transits there, or if Mars is sitting there, anytime you see Mars transits your 12th house, you will have difficulties in sleep. That will always happen. So the fact of the matter is that we have to take care that we do not do activities which aggravate our mind before sleeping for Taurus ascendance. Okay, do not go into debate shows. Do not see people fighting, quarreling. You see that and your sleep is ruined completely. All right. So it has been a very long video. And in the next video, I'll be explaining about the each of the planets and how they behave and what are the characteristics of the planets, the lordships. All right. We will discuss them in more detail. Okay. So there you go. If you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know how Taurus Ascendants behave or share it with other Taurus Ascendants to know themselves better and to understand themselves better. Okay. And if you want a consultation regarding your chart, then you can go to my website. You will find the link to the website in the description section of this video below. Okay. And before I end, as I always say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Okay. Until next time with planets for Taurus Ascendance. Okay. Goodbye. See you. Thank you.